instant cassettes. They're out in stores before the movie is finished. Ah, here it is, sir. Spaceballs. They're the amusing artists of the affluent 80s. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 comedy actors of the 1980s. And I have just one request, would you play a couple of slow numbers so I can dance? Waking on a sex bomb. For this list, we are scouring Hollywood history to find the funniest comedic actors who ever graced a screen. We're focusing on performers from both feature films and television, but have decided to exclude talk show hosts and voice actors. Get me Rex Kramer. This is part of a series of videos spanning the decades. Number 10, Billy Crystal. I never had a relationship with a woman that didn't involve sex. I feel like I'm growing. In 1984, this proud New Yorker joined the most famous comedy troupe of the Big Apple. Thank you, my darlings. Good evening. And I got to tell you from the bottom of my heart, you look marvelous. While he only spent one season with Saturday Night Live, his portrayal of a highbrow talk show host paved the way for a series of hysterical hosting gigs for comic relief. And a couple of iconic 80s films in Throw Mama from the Train, and When Harry Met Sally. Marriages don't break up on account of infidelity. It's just a symptom that something else is wrong. Really? Well, that symptom is f***ing my wife. Of course, it was his 1984 appearance in This Is Spinal Tap that introduced Crystal to a wider audience. Do the dead bird. Changes, get the dwarf cannolis, the little ones. Okay, right. I did the bird. Come on, don't talk back, huh? Mime is money, let's go. Come on, move it. With a brilliant gift for Gab, this man could transform any conversation into comedy. Let's bust him. For what? In this neighborhood, a Mercedes is probable cause. Number nine, Lily Tomlin. I'm going to come back from the dead. Oh. And, uh, <clears throat> what makes you think you can do that? Because I'm rich. Truly a versatile performer, this veteran comedian once appeared as a bearded soul singer named Purvis Hawkins on Saturday Night Live. Millennials may know Lily Tomlin as Miss Frizzle on The Magic School Bus, or more recently, as Jean Fonda's co-star in Grace and Frankie. Will you just get dressed? I am dressed. You can't go in that. Back in 1980, those two veteran actresses were already doing comedic work in the film 9 to 5. Your coffee, Mr. Hart. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Although Tomlin only starred in a handful of big screen flicks throughout the decade, her exuberant portrayals of surreal characters made her not only one of the most relevant comedy actors of the 80s, but also one of the most endearing. You know my penis! How dare you say penis to a dead person? Number eight, John Candy. What do you want? It's me. It's us. Not a single year passed during the 80s without this colossal performer appearing large and in charge on the big screen. Who are you? I'm the best man. What's your name? Barf. Your full name. Bartholomew. At only 29 years of age, John Candy nabbed a role in John Landis's 1980 classic, The Blues Brothers. And by the following year, his Stripes character, Dewey Oxberger, established a new pedigree for cinematic dimwits. My name's Dewey Oxberger. My friends call me Ox. You might have noticed I've uh, got a slight weight problem. No. no. Yeah, I do. No. Yeah, yeah. His larger-than-life persona allowed for creative flexibility, as he could play a menacing relative or an easygoing character doomed to suffer. There was only one John Candy, and just his very presence on screen made us smile. Why are you holding my hand? Where's your other hand? Between two pillows. Those aren't pillows. <laughs> Number seven, Tom Hanks. Oh, hey, boy, guess what? It's time for a bath. Come on, come on. Years before this guy began taking home Oscars and huge paychecks, he was just a lanky bosom buddy looking for a good time. You either open up this door or I'm going to break it down. No, Ellen, please. All right, that's it. Ellen, no. But after the success of his ABC hit, Hollywood noticed Tom Hanks' unique combination of quirkiness and leading man charisma. Oh, you make it sound so romantic. 
armed with a natural wide-eyed presence and contagious laugh. He became the perfect fit for a variety of grown-up, coming-of-age stories. Hanks was the movie star we all wanted to hang out with, and we seemed to be sharing the small treasures of life along with his magical characters. Well, a girl has to try. Number 6. Chevy Chase <laughs> oh. While the 80s were jam-packed with a vast array of hilarious comedy actors, the central chapter belonged completely to this former SNL star. Arizona moon keep shining from the desert sky above. His overly confident characters seemed to know something we didn't, as they bordered the line between genius and pure lunacy. What are we gonna do? <laughs> Clark Griswold became one of the most iconic buffoons of the decade, and Chase's brilliant comedic timing made him an undeniable box office star. Well, hey, ooh. <laughs> yeah. His roles were filled with social detachment, which made his films such a joy to watch. Clark, you're scaring me. Don't be scared. I just think somebody owes us an explanation, that's all. Number five, Dan Aykroyd. They're not gonna catch us. We're on a mission from God. Upon leaving Saturday Night Live in 1979, this Canadian teamed up with the late John Belushi for a classic 80s flick steeped in style and loaded with laughs. It's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas. Half a pack of cigarettes, it's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Maybe it was the voice that hooked viewers, or perhaps the incredible hair. But regardless, Dan Aykroyd torched the 80s with his complete command of deadpan comedy. Ophelia! Oh, you realize that that's I know, the name I know, I know, Hamlet's girlfriend. He went crazy, she killed herself. This is not Shakespeare, Louis. He brought the douchey Roman Craig to life opposite John Candy in The Great Outdoors. Yeah, that's a fact. And, proving he could write as well as perform, his turn as one of the Ghostbusters defined a spectacular era of comedy. Listen, you smell something? Number four, Steve Martin. The three Has there ever been a comedian more suave than Steve Martin? Well, he would probably tell you no, cause he's awesome like that. Ooh. All right. He was a wild and crazy guy that always knew when to push a little harder for laughs without losing his audience. I mean, didn't you, didn't you notice on the plane when you started talking, eventually I started reading the vomit bag? Martin maintained a steady presence in mainstream films throughout the decade, but it was roles in movies like Planes, Trains and Automobiles, Roxanne and Dirty Rotten Scoundrels that highlighted his comedic flexibility. I know you slept with her, but you didn't have to steal her money. Steal her money? I didn't steal her money, she stole from me! And of course, he slayed the Saturday Night Live stage several times during the same brilliant run. Humorous. Laugh and the world laughs with you. Sneeze and it's goodbye Seattle. <laughs> Number three, Leslie Nielsen. Yes, yes of course. This salt and pepper Canuck was dead serious about making viewers cackle thanks to his deadpan delivery. Engine room, is the chief still there? Yes, sir. This is the captain. Put him on. Aye, aye, sir. Leslie Nielsen began the decade by transitioning from dramatic roles to comedy spoofs like 1980s Airplane, and the result was simply phenomenal. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. Nielsen capitalized on his new comedic persona, by taking on the role of Detective Frank Drebin for the short-lived Police Squad sitcom, which led to the 1988 release of The Naked Gun. That's the movie franchise that cemented Nielsen's place as the ultimate straight-faced comedy actor of the 80s. Number two, Bill Murray. I'd call that a big yes. While many actors fit comfortably into one particular genre of comedy, this man blurred the lines of laughter and drama with his own expressive style of performing. Uh, bluegrass, Kentucky bluegrass, uh, feather bed bench, and uh, Northern California sensimia. Born and raised in Chicago in a family of artists, 
Bill Murray had already established his polished comedic presence on SNL when he was cast as Carl Spackler in Caddyshack. And his success in early 80s classics foreshadowed the future dramedies that would define his career. Oh, Mrs. Crane, you're a little monkey woman, you know that? You're a little monkey woman. You're lean and you're mean and you're not too far between either, I bet, are you, huh? With an unequaled ability to improvise, Murray not only brought out the best in his fellow actors, but also kept audiences gasping at his astounding range and talent. There's the Bill Murray way, and then there's everything else. If I get killed, my blood is on your hand. Just don't get it on my shoe, okay? No? Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Go away. It's my last word. Go, go. It's a jelly. I feel stunning and entrancing. Feel like running and dancing for joy. Are you married? There's only one woman for me. And I can't stand up. I'm really proud of you, Ernest. You did what nobody else could have done. Yep. I guess I'm just a take charge kind of guy. A man of vision and of scopes. Know what I mean? <laughs> Number one, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> In a time when veteran white actors were displaying their comedic expertise on Saturday Night Live, a teenaged African-American comic from Brooklyn became the shining star. Characters like Buckwheat and Mr. Robinson opened up a cultural dialogue in America while simultaneously reviving the NBC show. Aunt ties, three times I made it. When Eddie Murphy left to pursue a film career, Behold, Simi! Life! Real life! His balls out style of comedy made him one of the most successful stars of the 80s. You know what I am? I'm your worst fing nightmare, man. I'm a with a badge. That means I got permission to kick your fing ass whenever I feel like it. He connected with audiences by highlighting taboo subjects and successfully transferred his stand up act to the big screen. Y'all ain't know I was a ventriloquist, too. <laughs> Do you agree with our list? Who's your favorite comedy actor of the 80s? Listen, let's put on some music around here. Like <laughs> For more mind-blowing top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. For now, this is Fernando saying we have to leave. We'll see you next week, my friends. And I am Fernando saying to you, you look marvelous. <laughs>